Alright guys, uh, today I'm going to go through with you this particular video which basically uh, summarizes the APM syllabus. So I hope that this video will give you a very quick uh, revision, alright, a uh, quick recap uh, right before your exam for APM. So the very first thing when we talk about APM, alright, it's uh, all about performance management. Now I believe, you know, if you are going for exam, okay, I mean, you, you would have seen the past year. So uh, the term performance management, it's been there, you know, in, in the question requirement. So what is actually performance management? Now when we talk about performance management, it basically refers to activities carried out by the company leading towards the organization goal. You know, what you do, okay, leading towards your organization goal. Okay, and you know, how do we know whether we are working towards the organization goal? So it's all about carrying out performance measurement. So the 2 p.m., all right, uh, it's always there in the question requirement for paper APM. So basically, performance measurement, it's all about measuring the success of the activities that you are carrying out within your performance management. Okay, so now we know that, you know, when we measure performance okay it's all about uh, identifying the success of the activities that are carried out by your company whether it is leading towards the organization goal or not so therefore okay when we talk about uh, measuring the performance all right we need to start with the very first thing understanding what is the mission of your company Okay, so uh, mission, the basic purpose of existence of your organization. Now, when we talk about mission, if you recall, you know, when you have practiced sufficient APM questions, you will realize that, you know, a majority of the question, uh, you know, they will start off by telling you about the mission. So it is essential, you know, when you read the exam question, when you see mission, yes, highlight it, all right? That's the main point, okay? So now, mission, will influence your goal, goal will then influence your divisional or departmental objectives. Okay, so what happened here is this. When the question, okay, when the question asks for evaluating KPI, okay, now when we talk about evaluating KPI, so we need to refer back to what is your organization's mission, what is your organization's goal, okay? So whenever you are faced with questions regarding uh, evaluating or suggesting KPI, so always remember what's your mission and what's your organization goal, okay? So that's how you know whether the KPI is right or wrong, okay? Now, the next thing, is when we formulate our strategy, okay, when we formulate our strategy uh, leading towards your organization goal, it is essential that we understand what would be our critical success factor. What's our company critical success factor? So this is another aspect, uh, important aspect of your APM, okay, where, you know, the examiner may have some questions on critical success factor. Okay, now is critical success factor similar as your KPI? Not really, okay, because critical success factor is the features okay, of a product or service that a customer seek for from your company. Okay, so it is basically you know, the features that sets your company apart from your competitor. You know, it addresses the question why your uh, customer buy from you and not your competitor. Okay, so that is your critical success factor. Now, with regards to critical success factor, sometimes examination question may actually uh, test student on aspects such as uh, suggesting okay, a critical success factor. Now, when we want to suggest critical success factor, there are three important factors that we have to consider. So the very first one is look at your industry. Okay, what industry are you in? So basically, if you are in manufacturing, so I believe critical success, you cannot run away from efficiency. So efficiency would be one of the critical success factor. Okay, and if you are talking about, um, I mean, service, then uh, customer satisfaction. Okay, now besides looking at your industry, okay, so we also need to look at your 
company, the company itself, all right, your own organization. Could it be your location, uh, your strategy of cost leadership, you know? So look at the question for assistance about, you know, the suitability of what makes your company unique, okay? And finally, is there any temporary factors, okay, such as if your company is having some cash flow issue, so I think immediate uh, factor would be you need to raise the cash, okay, in order to survive, okay? So that is critical success factor. Now, uh, is critical success factor and KPI, are they related? Okay, yes, they are, okay? So what I would say is critical success factor is the measure of the success of your critical success factor, okay? Take, for example, my critical success factor is customer satisfaction. So how do I measure my uh, customer satisfaction? The student's pass rate, okay? So the student pass rate contribute, okay, to the critic, uh, the customer satisfaction, okay? So, so I would say, you know, they are related, but they are not the same, okay? Because KPI is the measure of the critical success factor. So what, what happened here is, you know, uh, how do the examiner okay, test students regarding uh, KPI and critical success factor? So they can actually ask you to evaluate again, okay, to evaluate uh, KPI, okay, uh, the, the given KPI. So that means you have to look at the critical success factor provided. And from there, you have to see whether you have to explain okay, whether the KPI is measuring the critical success factor. Or if they ask you to suggest, so remember, okay, when you are asked to suggest, okay, look at, okay, look at the critical success factor. So now there are two rules, okay, there are two rules when suggesting a KPI. So the very first rule is make sure your KPI is measurable. And rule number two, okay, it, it must be justified. So how do we justify? Because it's, if it's related to critical success factor, explain that how this KPI measures the critical success factor. Okay, now let's proceed further. So just now when we say performance management, okay, so it's all about what an organization do, okay, leading towards its goal. So now we are now going to look at different, different models that are associated with uh, the company working towards the organization goal. Okay, so the very first one is the SWOT analysis. Okay, so this is rather straightforward. It is our internal and external analysis so that, you know, the management understands the company uh, better. Okay, so strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat. Okay, now moving on further, we have the next one, which is the uh, BCG metrics. Okay, so now basically when we talk about BCG metrics, it is all about understanding your product positioning, okay, by considering, okay, by considering the market share and the market growth, so we are able to identify your product or divisional positioning. So from there, okay, we will then formulate strategy. But do take note that this is an APM rather than an SBL paper, so our examiner, okay, focus is not on strategy formulation, okay, so where, where does APM comes in? Then what, what are the type of questions that, that we can expect uh, if we are talking about BCG, okay, so basically you have to be careful that, you know, other topics are being integrated with BCG to form a particular question. So, so far, based on past year, we have seen, okay, uh, where students are being asked to uh, carry out BCG analysis and from there, okay, we are supposed to evaluate the company performance. So, just as a simple fact, if your company has three products, two of them is in the dog category, so I think that tells a lot about the potential of your company's performance, okay? So we also have questions that, uh, you know, relate BCG with um, budgeting, okay, with budgeting, all right? So that's uh, about it, that you have to be careful, okay? So let's move on further. Now, um, balance scorecard, okay? So uh, this is one of the uh, more frequently, I would say, okay, more frequently uh, tested uh, model. Okay? If, you, if you look at uh, past year, I think, uh, 
it's quite frequent we do have questions on this so what is a uh, balanced scorecard all about it is a model okay a performance management model which is all about aligning okay our day-to-day -day, uh, business activity with the organization's strategy so that's why okay that's why when you look at how does balanced scorecard works okay we will start with our company's vision what's your company's vision so your vision you know you have your strategy because if you have a vision but you don't have a strategy then it becomes a dream you see so your strategy so that you can lead towards your organization's vision so now when we look at your organization strategy so we are looking at it from four different perspective okay so this is to ensure the efficient and effectiveness of the strategy adopted leading towards your organization's uh, vision okay and for individual perspective we will determine you know for financial perspective we will determine what would be the organization's uh, objective regarding the customer perspective okay and once you have determined what's the objective for your customer perspective we will then come out with the kpi okay the kpi to measure the objective for your customer perspective and then once you have your KPI, what's the next thing? Your target. Okay, you have a KPI, you need a target as well. Okay, so that's what uh, uh, balance scorecard is all about. And if you still don't know what's the four perspective, you have the customer perspective. Uh, sorry, the financial perspective, the customer perspective, you have the internal business process perspective, and finally you have the learning and grower perspective, which are related very much to the employees okay now moving on uh, further we have the next one uh, benchmarking okay now when we say benchmarking it basically means compare against the best practice okay so now when we talk about comparing against the best practice so basically bench benchmarking is all about okay uh, identifying areas for further improvement okay so it's all about you know how we could have improved further now there are basically seven steps uh, towards your benchmarking uh, was tested quite a long time back all right once okay so uh, I mean that that's once only all right so now there are a few there are quite a number of uh, types of benchmarking so the very first one I mean the most commonly used is competitor benchmarking when we have our internal benchmarking or process benchmarking and we have functional benchmarking okay so uh, then moving on we have another model which is uh, Porter's five forces okay so what is uh, Porter's five forces all about okay it is basically all about assessing the attractiveness okay of a particular market okay now you know when we talk about you know uh, entering okay into a particular market okay so if you want to improve your company's performance okay so we will have to assess whether should or should not enter into the market okay so it is all about using the Porter's five forces in order for us to assess the attractiveness of entering into the market okay as a performance improvement strategy okay so how do we know it is attractive or not we will basically use the five forces to assess the level of competition because if it is perceived that market is highly competitive okay then you know in a very competitive market chances of a company uh, to maximize its profit margin are a little bit limited okay so this is uh, what uh, Porter's five forces is all about okay <clears throat> now uh, moving on further now we have is uh, budgeting so now basically when we we talk about this area of the syllabus budgeting so what has it got to do with performance management you see earlier we were talking about you know uh, different models that can lead you you say uh, towards your organization goal you say so how you can improve your performance enter into market look at five forces balance scorecard what we do you know our daily our strategy making sure it's effective so the four perspective okay so where does budgeting comes in so budgeting is all about control okay control okay so it's basically all about ensuring the performance of the organizations are being controlled so you know in terms of budgeting now don't don't uh, be too entirely worried okay uh, more on theory the focus although if you do see past year there are past year uh, 
that has some elements of calculation, and it seems that rolling budget was there quite a number of times. Okay, so uh, there are different different types of budgeting. Okay, there are different different types of budgeting. So we have uh, the very first one, fixed versus flexible budget. Okay, so now uh, uh, what is actually a fixed budget? So a fixed budget is a type of budget that uh, once set will not change okay irrespective okay irrespective of the actual volume okay it will remain unchanged okay so that means uh, it's actually not good for comparison purpose because your budget is being compared okay your actual is being compared to the fixed budget okay so you may have actually different volume so that's where the idea of flexible budgeting comes from okay so flexible budgeting is all about adjusting the budget to reflect the actual volume so it helps in comparison okay now uh, we have another one which is incremental budgeting so uh, incremental budgeting is a form of budgeting where with the management when preparing the budget they will refer Okay, they will refer to the previous year budget, make some adjustment and allowance okay, to derive the following year budget. Okay, now, uh, APM, it's not about explaining all this. Okay? I, I mean, you, you should know by now. So, what do you need to know then? Or how are you going to be assessed? Okay? So, usually, the examiner again will ask student to evaluate the suitability of the budget used by the company. Okay, so you need to know, you know when we should use incremental, uh, when we use this and that type of budget. Okay, so we have here incremental. So incremental budgeting will be suitable uh, if the environment, okay, the division's environment or the company's business environment is rather stable. Okay, limited uh, new opportunity. It's rather stable, you know, this year, next year, last year, they're all the same. Then, you know, if you use incremental budgeting, I think, uh, that would be fair okay that would be fair okay but uh, if let's say you know uh, your business environment is rather dynamic okay if your business environment is rather dynamic uh, then no okay so you have to be very careful okay so incremental budgeting now uh, since i was talking about uh, dynamic okay so you know if your business environment is dynamic your divisions is having a uh, significant growth then uh, what type of budgeting will be suitable? Rolling budget. Okay, rolling budget would then be suitable. Okay, because you can actually because rolling budget is a continuous form of budgeting, so you can actually continue to update. All right, your budget to reflect for the new opportunity or the uh, for I mean the, the the sales. Okay, because your sales is growing exponentially, so you can actually update your budget for that. Okay. So now we have the next one, uh, zero based budgeting, uh, ZBB, okay, zero based budgeting. So it's a form of budgeting where whenever we start to prepare the budget, we start from scratch, assuming zero knowledge. Okay, so you know, so this is uh, as like asking your manager, you know, you know nothing. Okay, so let's start everything from fresh okay so uh, usually there are situations where you know ZBB would be more applicable so it is suitable okay especially if it's for discretionary expenditure you know when it means marketing budget okay marketing budget because we know well you know marketing is something that you know uh, intangible benefits okay so you know you might want to consider ZBB to make sure that you know there is a more uh, efficient allocations of resources okay it doesn't go to waste all right what you are about to spend okay and uh, that also uh, means that you know uh, ZBB it's more suitable as well to be used by public sector you know government uh, government agency you know might want to consider the use of ZBB because it allows them to justify the uh, spend okay so because they can show okay they can discharge better their public accountability okay and uh, the last one we have here is activity based budgeting so whenever we talk about ABB you know it, it, it the three of them comes together okay the three of them comes together okay ABC ABB ABM all right so what's the connection okay so basically activity based budgeting 
or sorry, activity-based management. So it, it's all about you know acknowledging the fact that because business environment evolve over time, okay, evolve over time. So we know that, all right, we know that, uh, you know. Company are now no longer labor intensive. Okay, we are more uh, capital intensive with more investment in uh, manufacturing technology. Okay, so basically, you know, the traditional way of uh, uh, allocating overhead is no longer relevant. Why is this so? Because uh, under ABM, we acknowledge the fact that it is not the department that incur costs. It is the the activity. Okay, the activities that are being carried out that incur costs. Okay, so it's not the department that incur costs. Okay, but rather it's the activity. So if we want to manage, okay, our costs. Okay, you know, assuming we want to push our costs down. Okay, so what happened here is it's no longer relevant that you know we should actually uh, cut the divisional expenditure. You know, because you want to cut costs, so you cut the divisional expenditure. So this is the problem because in some divisions or department, when you do that. Okay, Okay, the issue is the customer satisfaction or the value uh, created okay, uh, is affected. So in ABM, you know, if we want to con uh, cut our costs, reduce our costs, so we have to control okay, uh, the cost driver. And how we do that? Okay, by identifying the activity, whether the activity is value adding or non-value adding activity. So I mean, Value adding are those activity that adds value to your finished goods, and non-value adding activity are those that does not add value. So you know if if there is a need for your company to reduce costs, so I think the focus should be on the non-value adding activity. So through the ABM method of managing costs, we are able to ensure that you know we can bring our costs down further without affecting the value of the finished goods. Okay? And because ABM says that you know it's not department that incur costs, it is the activity carried out okay, uh, that incur costs. So when we calculate uh, our product costing when we absorb our costs so it should be based on activity based costing rather than the traditional overhead absorption rate okay so uh, i mean a bit of calculation has been asked previously so a b c all right so i think one of the important formula from here would be the determinations of your activity cost driver rate okay and what is the connection to our abb just now so because we were saying that you know it's not department that incur costs okay since it's not department that incur costs but rather the individual uh, activity that are being carried out that incur costs so when we allocate resources we should allocate on activity basis rather than divisional basis all right now moving on the next one now because we were talking about divisions departments activity so we have now the next one the next uh, chapter that connects it is the business structure you know divisional functional structure okay but more importantly okay uh, we have a few concepts here all right uh, like such as ppr okay now when we talk about business process re-engineering okay so it's looking at how we adopt uh, changes to improve our business performance okay so uh, three important concepts associated with bpr the very first one is fundamental okay that means when we carry out uh, bpr we have to start from the very very basic okay asking ourselves you know why we do what we are doing okay number two is dramatic okay we are not looking for improvement when we carry out bpr we are looking for change okay so radical results dramatic okay uh, change in results that's what we are looking at okay not minor improvement and finally the focus of bpr is on your process all right okay now uh, the next one we have is uh, McKinsey uh, 7S. All right, so it's all about the integration. Okay, the integration of uh, different elements within an organization. Okay, and we also have our 
value chain as well okay because earlier remember we were talking about activities being carried out so Porter's uh, value chain uh, basically identify the activity within a business organization separating them into the primary the five primary activity and the four secondary activity and together okay they create value with the profits and that's how you derive the selling price okay and um, uh, you know uh, our business structure we relate to risk and uncertainty okay for for this part of the syllabus okay we will have to be careful you have to be careful there is a possibility you may be tested some calculation okay so uh, maximax maximin maximize expected value and also uh, minimax regret okay so now uh, you know maximax maximize maximum contribution Okay, maximin, okay, maximize, minimum contribution, that means choose the best among the worst. Okay, so that means risk averse uh, investors, okay, uh, will tend to go for maximin. But if you are risk taker, okay, then you will basically go for the best of the best. Okay, so you are more optimistic type of person. Okay, and then you have maximizing expected value. Okay, and meanwhile, the not so common one is the minimax regret. Okay, minimize maximum loss. Okay, and when we say regret, you know, in decision making, what do you mean by regret? Okay, uh, that's when you make a loss, when you make a wrong decision. So the loss as a result of the wrong decision. Okay, so now when we talk about uh, making decisions under uh, conditions of uncertainty, risk and uncertainty. Okay, so we have to consider the impact of our stakeholder the influence okay the influence and the interest of the stakeholder and so this bring us to Mandelo's uh, stakeholder mapping okay where we will look at okay uh, different stakeholder uh, where or how they may have an impact on our decision making okay and again you gotta be careful okay so because this is an APM paper so they will try to draw a line between the questions for APM and the questions for SPL so you know for APM you know it's more of the KPI so you know not surprising uh, you may be asked to suggest uh, KPI okay uh, you know they give you something on Mandela all right so from there so you should know you know who are the key player okay who is the one under the minimal effort okay because you know your KPI should be for who well I guess you 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 know right okay I don't need to tell you explicitly over here okay all right now after looking at your business structure so we are now moving to the next area of your syllabus which is all about the management uh, accounting system you see managers make decision okay they need information to assist them in their decision making okay so uh, you know what are the concepts okay now uh, especially you might want to pay more attention to the developments in IT okay so uh, I mean the examiner has article on this all right I have individual video on this all right so you might want to go through them before your exam so data analytic data visualization process automations internet of things okay so um, now uh, we are not we are not gonna be an IT expert after APM okay but we are looking at how all these developments in IT has to do with our performance management so you know internet of things okay internet of things okay so let's let's just look at internet of things so when we talk about internet of things we are looking at devices that are connected to the internet okay capturing information so capturing data data are being processed to provide information to the manager okay so this is to assist manager in decision making so your exam they are not going to ask you to explain that okay they're not gonna, they are going to tell you okay they are going to tell you so basically it's all about you know uh, assessing possibly assessing okay maybe your, your the, the questions can put it in a way that your manager okay uh, is very new to internet of things seek your advice of how internet of things can be benefit for the company before they embark or commit on this amount of investment okay uh, so you are supposed to identify the benefits and usually the benefits that you are talking about are not generic but related to the given case study 
in your exam question. Okay, and now we have as well uh, lean manufacturing. Okay, so lean, all right, is all uh, the concept of lean is all about the uh, eliminations of waste. All right, so it acknowledges that waste exists. Uh, in different different form okay so what your company can do in order to eliminate the waste okay so now after all the things that your company do okay performance management so now we go to the main one measurement okay performance measurement how do we know okay the actions the activity that your company carried out will lead to the organization's goal, okay? So you need to carry out performance measurement. So under performance measurement, we have different areas, okay? Different areas uh, that you need to know. So starting with the very first one, VBM, okay? Value Based Management, okay? So it's basically uh, managing business to maximize value, okay? So the focus here is on value creation okay because remember the goal of an organize a business organization is maximization of shareholder wealth and you know we know roce is not okay bear in mind roce is one of the more important ratio in your exam so roce okay roce okay uh, is not a measure of shareholder wealth okay so if ROCE is not, then what is a relevant measure? So this is where VBM comes in. Okay, it's all about a concept, all about you know a manager. Okay, should focus on value creation. Okay, so identifying what are the key drivers within your business which can uh, create value. Okay, so now this brings us one of the relevant measure is EVA. Okay, economic value added and you know uh, EVA is a measure of uh, the true wealth created by the manager okay so if your EVA is positive so it means that the manager has successfully created value now the thing is uh, you know you, you okay EVA is another very uh, important area within your APM so I mean you need to know the for uh, the formula okay so what's EVA formula no part minus your capital charge so no part is your economic profit okay it's your economic profits okay and how do you derive that you know your operating profit you make adjustment all right you make adjustment you know all those relevant adjustment i'm not going to go this is a recap okay so you got to know the formula by now okay and then you know you minus your capital charge okay so that gives you your eva and when your eva is positive the manager's performance is good, but if your EVA is negative, it means the manager has destroyed value. Okay, so now moving on, uh, what if uh, the scenario is actually not for profit organization? So it, it's unique, all right? It's unique, it's rather unique. Okay, you have problems because all our financial measures are no longer relevant okay so you need a new set of measures so this is where vfm comes in all right value for money measures okay the three e okay the three e now before i go here okay so maybe i would like to indicate one more okay since we are at not for profit organization okay by the way three e means economy efficient effectiveness all right so economy means we look at the focus is on the cost of providing the service okay the cost of providing the service okay uh, efficient okay efficient focus on resource utilization uh, efficient focus on resource utilization input output okay and finally uh, we have effective so how do we know it you, your, the organization is effective look at the goal the objective okay so the trick is how do we know it is effective or not look at the organization goal okay so you have had past year okay that test on uh, uh, police force okay you have past year on school you have past year on uh, waste disposal okay so basically it doesn't matter what is the past year they are not for profit right so look at the question what's the goal they will give you the goal the organization goal and when i start with this video what did i say about evaluating kpi 
your organization goal. As long as your KPI is related to the organization goal, perfect. Okay, that is a relevant KPI. If it's not related to the goal, nah, that's wrong KPI. And you know, expected, the examiner will then ask you to suggest a relevant KPI. Okay, all right. Now uh, moving on to another model. Okay, another model. Uh, building blocks of performance measure. Okay. So uh, this particular model are also associated with uh, service organization. So service organization is a little bit unique. So the uniqueness of a service organization can be summarized into five elements. I S H O P I shop. Okay. So intangible, simultaneous. All right. Uh, H heterogeneity, ownership, and perishable. Okay. The uniqueness of a service organization. I shop. All right. So now building blocks of performance measure. Okay, guys, remember. Okay, we've got a lot of students. You know, when whenever building block comes out in exam, wow, you guys are happy. You know. Okay, but that's the your your happiness. Uh, you know, is is only on that exam day, not on result day. Okay. So you you always thought that oh, building blocks of perform performance measure is is that sixth thing. Hey guys, all right. Uh, building blocks of performance measure covers the dimensions of measures, the standards, and the rewards. So see carefully. Is the question asking you on the dimensions, the the building blocks, or are they just asking on the dimensions of building block? Okay. If they say building blocks, then it means three things. Okay, the dimensions, the standards, and the reward. Okay. So dimension over here covers the six areas of performance. Okay, the six areas of performance. Number one. All right. <laughs> Financial, okay, financial performance. Number two, quality of service. Number three, innovation. Okay, number four, all right, resource utilization. Okay, you. Number five, uh, talking about the competitiveness. Okay, number five, talking about the competitiveness. Okay, and number six, six, talking about flexibility. Okay, flexibility. So now flexibility basically means your ability to adapt and change, ability to meet customer need. Okay, ability to meet customer needs. Okay, then uh, standard. Okay, now when we we'll talk about uh, standard, okay, we are looking at the target. Okay, we are looking at the target. Okay, and uh, when we say target, you know, one of the keywords, ownership. Okay, the employee. Are able to accept, okay? Then you know, uh, accept the target, okay? So number two, it must be achievable. Targets must be challenging, okay? To have motivation effect, easy target, no motivation. Ideal target means demotivation, all right? And finally, targets must be fair, okay? So three things under target standard, all right? Ownership, okay? Achievability. And also fairness. And now, if you have KPI areas to measure, you have your target. Now, come on, you must have reward, right? Okay, you must have reward. All right, that's where, that's why employee works. Okay, so when we talk about reward, okay, and bear in mind, guys, this part on reward can also be used in another area of your syllabus. Evaluating reward. Okay, your examiner also likes to ask on evaluating reward, so you might want to you you might want to consider these uh, factors. Okay, so number one, uh, when we have reward, we must be based on the employee's controllable. Okay, keyword controllable performance. Okay, controllable. Your reward must be motivating. All right, you know, don't have a reward. Just you you thought there is a reward, but to your employee. Yeah, that's useless junk. Okay, so your reward must give motivation, lead towards improve uh, performance and clarity. Okay, your reward must be clear. Okay, so you know don't don't uh, tell your employee you know achieve the target and I will make sure you are well rewarded. You know the definition of well rewarded. All right, so that's for building blocks of performance measure. Then uh, we have another uh, model, which is a performance pyramid. Okay, and if you know, you look at the pyramid, you know that this particular model is based on the organization structure. So it refers to a cascade of performance at 
different level, okay, operational, okay, tactical, strategic, ultimately leading towards your organization's vision. So now students' question is, you know, Spencer, do, do, do we need to know the nine areas of performance within your uh, within the, the, the pyramid? Yeah, well, you know, if it's coming out, you, you need to know, right? Okay, so your vision, okay? So your vision splits into two, okay? Two, your pyramid splits into two, internal measures, external measures, all right? So uh, pyramid, okay, does not only look at internal, it also looks at external measures, okay? It also consider, okay, it also consider your uh, financial, non-financial measures, okay? So now we have our first one, financial performance and market, okay? And then from market, it goes down, all right? Market, it goes down, okay? You have your customer satisfaction, then you have your flexibility, okay? And then you have your uh, productivity. And under productivity, we will have your uh, waste, okay? Cycle time, all right? Uh, then you have your delivery and you have your quality, okay? So that's uh, regarding performance pyramid. Okay, so now talking about all these uh, different, different models of performance measure, okay, so the next possible area is evaluating reward, okay? So uh, there is a possibility your examiner might actually uh, give you different forms of reward. So uh, you know, let, let, that's just a very quick recap, some of the uh, possible reward. What if an uh, employee is given a bonus on uh, profit? Okay, managers are entitled to a bonus on achievements of certain profit target. Okay, now the issue with this uh, reward is that profit figure, okay, the focus is not on the bonus, but the focus is on the profit figure. Profits, you know, is from, it's an accounting figure. So it's subjected to a lot of uh, factors or costs that are actually beyond the control of the manager. So it may not be a very fair. So because, you know, we don't want to hold the manager accountable, okay, uh, you know, their bonus is affected, his or her bonus are affected f uh, due to uncontrollable costs. Okay, so it's not that fair. Now, what if the bonus is on achievements of revenue? Now, that's another issue as well. Because if bonus on uh, revenue, okay, so it may come to a point uh, of dysfunctional, may, may lead to dysfunctional behavior because the manager, in order to make the sales, might intentionally sell it cheaper because, you know, we know well when you sell cheaper, you sell more because it's attractive, you know. So that may actually cause your company uh, to earn less at the expense of, I mean, your, your, your manager will meet the bonus at the expense of the company. So this is what we call dysfunctional behavior. Okay, and now uh, what if bonus on achievements or budget? Okay, uh, the focus is, the focus is look at the budget. Who sets the budget? So uh, your past year, they kind of lo love to uh, uh, say the, the budget is set by the finance department. Uh, so that's another focus, okay? You know, uh, who, who are they to actually set your budget? Okay, so do they have the data? Do they know? All right, so uh, budget, who sets? Okay, be careful, all right? So uh, these are some of the... Uh, reward scheme, okay? So they may ask you uh, to assess reward, all right? So now moving on uh, to the next area, uh, this last few area. So quality management, okay? So TQM, you know, TQM. So two important concepts here, uh, zero defect, okay? And get it right first time. So continuous, zero, zero defect, okay? Continuous improvement until you achieve perfections and get it right first time, okay? So, and because of uh, TQM, you know, we have the concept of just in time, okay? Because we know that inventory holding is a non-value adding activity, okay? And extending further from our TQM concept, we have this Kaizen costing, okay? Now, uh, Kaizen costing basically builds on three things, okay? Uh, Kaizen costing focuses on continuous cost reduction, all right? Kaizen is basically all about continuous. A company should continue to seek ways to reduce its cost, okay? And it builds on from target costing. Now, in target costing, we know that, you know, it is useful, okay, for newly launched product, okay, target costing, whereby we try to calculate, okay, our product's target cost 
and compare to the actual cost to identify the cost gap. And then, you know, you find way to bring your actual cost down to the target cost. Okay. And because Kaizen costing is on a continuous, the concept is continuous cost reduction. So we should not stop there. So incorporating standard costing where we lower down the standard cost in order to ensure that your company continue to reduce the cost okay and finally all right if you fail in your performance management you fail in different aspect of your this apm syllabus so finally this is the last chapter obviously this is what will happen to your company corporate failure okay so uh within this chapter so two important thing is the qualitative and uh, quantitative model of uh, evaluating whether a company is at risk of failure okay so qualitative model the agenti model okay three important things okay defect okay so for any company who fail so they will initially exhibit they will initially you know you can see they have defects okay defects will lead to mistake okay and mistake means symptoms will be shown okay so qualitative model and we have the Z score, the quantitative model. Okay, and regarding this quantitative model, Z score, you know, the examiner comes out with A score, K score, Q score. Now, guys, uh, there is no A score, K score, Q score. These are the models. Okay, uh, the examiner uh, uh, fictitiously have it in your exam question. Okay, um, it's just testing our ability to use the given model. All right, uh, because you see, we, we don't want, SCCA don't want uh, graduates, you know, members who are only, you know, because you learn Zach score, you know Zach score. Come on, guys, all right, so uh, they, they give you in a new situation. So if it's a case score, so you are supposed to use the variables in the case score and comment further. All right, so, you know, uh, don't blame your tutor if you see, you know, an S score in uh, your coming exam. All right, guys, so I hope uh, this video, all right, will prove useful for your last minute revision. Okay, good luck in your coming exam.